Welcome to the Inkscape Beginner Course. I'm Scientific Illustrator John, and this is a course that designed for you so you can pick up Inkscape within an hour. Initially, I designed this course for scientists. However, this program suits everybody who wants to start using the software because the basics are the same. I believe most of you already have Inkscape installed in your computer. If you don't, you can check out the download link in the description. At the end of this course, you should be able to draw a signaling pathway in the style of nature review and you will also be able to follow my tutorials on my channel so you can draw very professional looking scientific illustrations for your publications. If you have any questions during the course, you can leave them in the comments. You can also DM me via social media. I always like to get straight to the point, so let's get the course started. After you open a new file in Inkscape, this is what you will be seeing in your window. The canvas at the center will be the place that you draw your illustrations on. I will give you a quick walkthrough of the environment of Inkscape. So first, let's take a look at the left hand side. This is the toolbar and there are many tools. On top of the canvas is the control bar of the tool that you are enabling right now. When you switch to a different tool, then the control bar would change. And on top of the control bar, you will find the menus. There are many functions that's hidden within these menus. And let's look at the right. This is the control panel. We'll go in depth on this part when we start working on the color. At the bottom of the window, you will find the color swatches. These are the colors Inkscape has mixed for you. And you can flip through the library by clicking on these arrows. On the lower right hand side, you will find a Z, a number, percentage number on it. This is the zoom tool. You can zoom in and zoom out on your canvas. Here's an art sign and this is for rotation. When you click on plus and minus sign, you can rotate your canvas. If you want to straighten it up, just type zero, then your canvas will be straight again. I'll show you how to change the canvas size. Let's come to file, click on document properties. You'll be able to change the width and the height of your canvas. For nature publications, they usually have a width of 183 millimeters for double column figures. I'll set the height at 120 millimeters. When you're set, just click on the cross sign to exit the window. Then you have your canvas at the new dimension. To save your file, come to file and save. Last one, number two. There's also another way to zoom in and zoom out of your canvas by using your mouse. With this scrolling button, then you can hold control and you will be able to zoom in and zoom out. So by default, we will have the selection tool enabled, but you can't really see what it does by having the selection tool on its own. So let's skip to the third tool, which is the rectangle tool. Then you will find that your cursor has changed into a rectangle. Just click and drag your canvas, then you will be able to create a rectangle. And if you want to create a square, hold control, you know, you guys can actually see which key I'm pressing underneath here. Control and drag. Then you will be able to create squares. And now we can switch back to the selection tool and click on the rectangle then you will find these double head arrows showing up around the rectangle. When you click and drag these arrows, you can scale your rectangle. If you click the rectangle again, you will find the arrows change into different forms. You will have these curved arrows on the corners. By click and drag these, you can rotate your object. And to undo what you have done, just press Ctrl Z. Then you can undo. And what about these double head arrow on the sides? When you click and drag it, you can skew your rectangle. And what about this icon at the center of your rectangle? This is called the anchor and you can click and drag it and move it to wherever on a canvas. In this case, I will place it on the bottom left of the rectangle. And now when you grab the rotation arrow, you will find that your rectangle will be rotating 
around the anchor. What if you want to relocate the anchor back to the center of your object? Hold shift and left click on the anchor. Then it will snap back to the center of the object. I'll move on to the second tool that I will show you, which is called Edit Paths by Node. It looks very similar to the selection tool, but there will be a difference when you select the object. There are no double head arrows showing up. Instead, there are some nodes showing up on the corner of your rectangle. There are these square shape nodes. You will find that they're really similar to the double head arrow that you had in your rectangle tool. But what about this one, this round node? When you hold it and drag it, you will be able to round the corner of your rectangle. And we will come back to this tool later when we are working on paths. Uh, you can actually move your object beyond the boundary of the canvas. I'm clearing some space because I'm going to show you more of the shapes. Now let's grab the ellipse tool for drawing ellipse and also for circle, hold control and then you can create circles. When you're in the selection tool mode, you can do the same type of transformation and that's switch to the edit path by node tool. It's the same for the square nodes and what would happen when you drag on the round node. You can create a Pac-Man, also a pizza shape. What if you want to remove this effect? You need to return to the ellipse tool and then come up here in the control bar and click on make the shape a whole ellipse. Click on it. Then you can have your whole circle again. Right, I'll make a few copy of the circle. Control C and Control V to make copies. And let's take a look at the control bar when you're in the circle tool. Let's make a Pac-Man. And there are a few modes. One is switch to slice. So now I have a slice of the pie. What if you change to switch to arc? You can have an arc. And then there's another mode this one switch to court as if like one part of your circle is chipped off and if you want to make it a full circle again just click on make the shape a whole ellipse now i'll show you the next shape tool create stars and polygons on the control bar you can select whether you want a polygon or a star first let's play with some polygons and now we have a pentagon because we have five corners in the control bar and you can change the number of the corner so you can also create a hexagon or a heptagon or even more hold control and click and drag your polygon tool and you can have it perfectly aligned to the horizontal line of the canvas and did you see that we have this node on the corner it will scale your polygon in its proportion if you are in the selection tool instead then you can squeeze your polygons so that's the difference now we can make some stars so let's come up here to the control bar to switch the mode to the star mode and then we can create a star with six corners and again if you hold control then you can make your star align to the to the x and y axis you can also change the corner on your stars so now <laughs> it looks more like an explosion when you have a lot of corners let's zoom in a little bit when you're still in the polygon tool you'll be able to see these two nodes and when we drag it you can change how the how the corner of the star grow from its inner radius and outer radius you can sort of spin it like this displace it and then it will look like it's spinning like a hurricane image you will see from the outer space and this outer node can extend the outer radius of the star the further you drag it the sharper the sharper the corner of the star will be you can also catch it up with the inner node so how do we fill a color into the circle 
let's use the selection tool to select the circle come down here to click on a color in the swatches and then you can have the red fill into your circle and let's zoom in a little bit and you'll see that this circle has a black outline let's check the lower left of our window and you will find the color control panel and in the fill you have a red color and in the stroke you have a black color so how do you change the stroke color you need to hold shift and then click on the color and click on the green then you will have green in your outline now the outline is really thin so you can barely see it let's make it thicker so do you see this number on the side of a stroke color right click and you can select different stroke size the width is four pixels wide now i will show you how to create a gradient in the shape let's come to our toolbar this is the gradient tool let's enable it by clicking on it let's check the control bar button will allow you to create linear gradient and this one will allow you to create a radial gradient and let's switch to the create linear gradient click and drag on the shape then you will be able to fill a gradient into the shape and you can see this blue line with two nodes this is called a gradient handle when you move the gradient hand the node of the gradient handle around the gradient will change according to the handle you can see that the round node represent the white color and the square node represent the red color and what if you want to change the color let's have the round node selected and then click on the color in the swatches then you can change your gradient color the same goes to the red side pick a color like this green then it will change into green oh this looks like a mango in a way don't you guys think if i squeeze it down a little bit it looks like a mango i will show you another type of gradient that is extremely important in schematic scientific illustration that is the radio gradient come up here to the control bar and you will find this create radio gradient button and click on it under the center of your object and click and drag then you'll have your radial gradient in your object and the gradient handle looks different from the linear one so you have a square node at the center grab it and move it around you will be able to move the gradient around and for these round one you can you can rotate the gradient also you can change the shape of the gradient into a ellipse the type of radio gradient you see in the schematic illustration would be the color on the outer rim of the object and white at the center this will create an illusion of volume in your object and that's what those nature figures like to do and now we are ready to create some cells I'll show you how to draw T cells. So let's grab our ellipse tool, hold control, and create a circle. And now let's grab our gradient tool. Make sure you're in the radial gradient mode. Click and drag from the center. Fill in a color and we'll have white at the center. The color of the outline, I usually use dark gray. You can also use black. It depends on your personal preferences. I'll use 0.25 as the outline thickness. Use thin line for your outline. That can help your illustration looks clean, organized, and elegant. Then I'll control C, control V to get a copy of this sphere and I'll scale it down while holding control. So it will scale down proportionally. Then I'll move it into the bigger circle. Now I will remove the stroke. So right click on the stroke, stroke color and then click on remove stroke and you'll be able to remove it. And let's have our nucleus selected. Enable the gradient tool again and select the outer node, the round node and fill it in with a more saturated orange. All right, then that's how you create a T cell that looks like the ones you see in the nature reviews. T cell attacking pathogen.
T cell eating mangoes. Use Control G, then you can group it into one group. So let's come here to grab this draw Bezier tool and straight lines. Your cursor change into something like a marker pen. Let's click on the canvas. Then you will see a square node on the canvas. There is a red line projects from the node to your cursor and you can move your cursor to wherever you want on the canvas and then click again and now you will have a blue line connecting the first node to the second node and you can continue doing this for as long as you want and there's a trick that you can do when you click on a canvas don't let go and drag and have you noticed your blue line is a curve in this case and there are this new tangent line showing up with two nodes i will explain what they are for later let's continue creating nodes and when you want to finish the line just press enter now it doesn't look like a line <laughs> because it has a fill remember how to give a color to the stroke Hold shift and click on the color now you can see the gray outline we make it thicker and i will remove the fill you can either right click and add, click on remove fill or click on this cross sign now you have a you can see this black line has showing up on the path that you have drawn with your Bezier tool. And now let's grab our edit paths by note tool and click on this black line. And you will see all the nodes you have created with your Bezier tool will be showing up on this black line. Now you can use your edit note tool to select whichever node and move it around. You'll see the line will be moving along with the movement of the node. And you can place the note at the new place on the canvas and the line will reposition according to the new position of the node. This is the essence of vector graphics software all the shapes and lines you see in this software is computer generated when you scale your object the computer will simply calculate the distance between the notes again and draw it again for you that is why your graphics can stay very sharp in vector graphics software a little bit to the left and then we can have a deeper dive into this node right here all the other lines are straight but only this one is curved and there's a extra strange line here with a round node but this thing is called a handle so the handle is the tangent line of the curve then the handle can adjust how much curvature you want to have in the path that it is attached to and you can make any nodes with a path into a curve i'll show you how to do that let's select this node and you can find the button here it says make selected nodes smooth click on it and two handles will pop up at the node path that is generated from this node is a curve now and the node is the point of tangent of this curve what if you want to make it sharp again you can click on this button called make selected nodes corner click on it the node change back to a spade shape and now you can bend these handles and you'll be able to create corners really sharp corners by playing with, with these handles if you click on make selected nodes smooth and then these two handles will stay on the same tangent line and you cannot make a corner anymore so that's the difference between these two modes if you want to have a corner click on it then you can make a corner and if you want to make sure the curve is really smooth on the point of tangent click on make selected node smooth okay 
And now you see that you can have two handles with different length. And what if you want them to have the same length? Just click on this, make selected note symmetric. They will be the exact same length, no matter how you manipulate them. Okay, and the fourth one, make selected note auto smooth. When you click on it, it will just, it will calculate how the computer think this curve should look like according to the all the other information it has this is helpful when you want to clean up the line but uh, usually we will not be using this and if you want to remove the handle have the note selected click on make selected note corner and then click again this note return back to a corner and straight line on both sides and i'll show you how to break the then i'll show you how to add notes delete notes and break the path it can all be done in the added paths by note tool enable it select your path and let's take a look at the control bar the first button from the left is called insert new notes into selected segment let's have these two notes selected and when you click on this button you can add an extra node yeah, you can add a new node to the exact center of the distance between these two nodes and what if you want to remove a node so just have your node selected and then click on delete selected nodes then it's gone actually i rarely use these three the reason is that i can just double click on the path then i can create a new node I can also just press delete then i can delete the node so i don't need to use these two tools in most cases let's move on to the fourth button on the control bar this is called join selected nodes i'll show you what it does so let's have these two nodes selected they are they are on the open path let's click on this button now they're joined together and now this path is a closed path so if you fill in a color, then you will literally have a shape with this color inside of it. What if you want to break it open again? Just click on this break path at selected notes. Then you can break it. They become two notes again. And do you notice that the path only goes on until this node? That's right, because these two nodes are not connected. What if you want to add an outline here? That means you need to connect these two nodes together, right? But we cannot use the joint node function because this shape will be changed. Then what should you do in this case? Let's select these two nodes and come to this button instead. Joint selected nodes with a new segment. Click on it and you can create path on these two nodes and connect them together. So now this is a shape. And what if you want to open it up again? Select these two and then click on this delete segment between two non endpoint nodes. Then you can remove the path and this shape is open up again. Let's grab our Bezier tool and create a path when we select it and then come here to the fill and stroke control panel there are three tabs in the fill and stroke control panel you don't see anything in the fill because there's no paint in the fill at the moment so if you click on green then you'll see you have this flat color property showing up in the fill tab in the beginner course we don't need to go into too much about the color mode you will not need to adjust these for drawing schematic incentive illustrations you only need to pick colors from the default color swatches in inkscape but if you really want to mix your own color you can change some of the properties here and you can and change the color this a property this is for adjusting the opacity of your color it is called alpha opacity when you decrease it you'll find your color become transparent let's move it on top of the phospholipid then you can see through the fill and see the phosphate you see the transparency of the stroke stays the same only the fill has become transparent and make it opaque again and now let's try to decrease the opacity bar down here the stroke has become transparent along with the fill so that is the main difference between this opacity bar and this alpha bar and now 
let's come to the third tab stroke style and i will remove the fill so we only need to look at the stroke so the first property you will be able to adjust is the width of the stroke we can make it thicker by clicking plus and make it thinner by clicking minus you can also type the width you want and press enter that will work too and then we have this dash drop down menu when you open it you will see that there are all kinds of dash lines click on this one then you will have your path turn into a dash line the most common dash line we will see in the schematics scientific illustration is like a straight line you can make a horizontal line by holding control while drawing the path let's make it thinner and a dark gray color for the dash line you can adjust the length of each of the segments let's change pattern number to eight and then you have more space between each of the segments and let's take a look at the markers this can help you to create arrows so just select the arrowhead in the drop down menu let me make a copy of this remove the dash line just go back to dash and click on the solid line and we will have this arrow that you see in the schematic illustrations let's look at the joint so what does it do let me make a arrow that is in a shape like this with a corner and with an arrowhead this is also a very common type of arrow you will see in the schematics and now let's zoom in let's take a look at this corner now it is square it's it's a sharp corner because our join our join is in a meter join mode switch to the bevel join the join is chip off if we switch to the round join then you will have a round turn on the corner it is very subtle and when you zoom out you can barely see it it does affect your styling and usually for the arrows we will use the meter join but for your proteins if there is like a corner then it's better to use the round join all right and now with the cap let's zoom in to the end of the path and you'll see that now it is a round ending because we are in the round cap mode it would happen if we switch to the butt cap and you see that and now it is completely flat and let's try out the square cap it looks almost the same as the butt cap but there's a very subtle difference so if we use the edit path by note tool you see the note is embedded in the path and when you use the butt cap the note will be right on top of the ending of the path so there's this very subtle difference i will suggest you to use mostly butt cap you'll be able to position your notes more accurately the last one order we don't really need to use this it doesn't really help that much in the schematic scientific illustration so we will just skip this and once we have learned all of these we can create a unit for the lipid bilayer first let's grab the ellipse tool and draw an ellipse and let's zoom in grab our gradient tool to create a gradient and make sure you are in the radial gradient mode have your object selected and now click and drag then you'll be able to create the gradient and you can adjust the handle to make sure that it is circular and that's have the outer color as orange we'll fill in the white in the middle that is a phosphate head and let's grab the bezier tool and draw a path like this in the s shape and we can use the edit note tool to make it a little bit prettier more refined and now let's remove the fill and we only need the stroke for the lipid chain we can make it a little bit thicker maybe 0.5 points in this case okay and i will use a more saturated orange for the lipid chain now let's zoom in and you will see that the cap of your path now is butt cap and that will look very awkward for a organic structure so we need to make them into round cap let's go to the stroke style tab and then click on round cap now let's make a copy of the lipid chain because we need to we need to make sure that these two lipid chains are aligned at the same level so how do we do that it is very difficult to make it perfectly aligned by only using your eye we can ask the machine to help us 
let's select both of these lipid chains and then let's go to the object menu find the align and distribute control panel and now we have it open on this side we can click on align top edges then you will be able to align the two lipid chains at the exact same level i will show you a little bit more about the alignment tool so for example if we have more lipid chains we can very quickly align them by align them to the top and what if you want to distribute them evenly we come to the distribute section of the alignment tool and then click on distribute horizontally with even spacing and now you will have the same spacing between each of the lipid chain this is just a quick walkthrough of the alignment tool the icons are quite intuitive you can play with these buttons they're extremely handy when you want to have your objects organized now let's move back to our lipid chain and it looks uh, very awkward in front of the phosphate head we need to put them to the back while you're in the selection tool have your objects selected and then come up to the control bar come here to click on lower selection to the button then you can put the lipid chains all the way to the back and now there's a tiny thing that we need to do which is aligning this lipid chain group to the center of the phosphate head let's have both of them selected and then come to the align panel and click on center on vertical axis you can make very sure that your lipid chains are aligned to the center and once ready we can group them and make a copy of it because we need one for the outer layer of the bilayer and another one for the inner layer we need to rotate this unit for 180 degrees there are two ways to do it one is come up to the control bar while you have your selection tool enabled and then you will be able to find this button rotate selection 90 degrees clockwise so click on it for two times then you can rotate it to the inner side of your lipid layer another way to do that would be using the transform control panel you can find it in the object menu transform and you will find these tabs that can do different type of transformation and we will need to use rotate here you can type in a specific degree of the rotation that you want to have your op on your object and here we want it for 180 degrees press enter and you will have it exactly upside down those are the two ways you can rotate your object okay and now we can group these two into one unit before i group them i should have um, select both of them and use the alignment tool to al align them to the center vertical axis so make sure that they are exactly aligned and now I can group them into one unit and then I can start to duplicate them. So instead of just keep on pressing Ctrl C, Ctrl V, you can actually use a shortcut to duplicate it, which is first to use the selection tool to move your object and then hit space whenever you move to a new position. You can create a copy of the object exactly where you have your cursor. Now your lipid bilayer looks quite fluid, right? Because they're not aligned. Let's align them with the alignment tool. They're a little bit loose now. There are a lot of space in between that's uneven. How do we fix the space? Move one of the unit inward. It's okay if it overlaps with another unit. And then just select all of them and click on distribute horizontally with even spacing and if you still see some gap in between just keep on moving the outer unit in and distribute them again keep repeating until you are happy with the space in between the units and make sure you align them to the top edge again to just make sure that they are flat okay now we can group all of these and also make more copies and you have your cell membrane if you want to have these have a curved cell membrane then you can check out this tutorial 
it will show you how to do it. Because now it's missing the cytosol cell and it looks really empty. We can create a cytosol cell by simply create a rectangle. We will need a linear gradient in this rectangle, uh, which is from the top to the bottom. We will need to change it to orange and white. The cytosol cell is covering the cell membrane. So we need to send it to the back by clicking this lower selection to bottom. And let's remove the stroke. Right click on the stroke, to color control and remove stroke. Then you will have your cytosol. We can start to put some protein into this cell and start building up our signaling pathway. But before I do that, I will organize the layers. Come to the layer menu and click on layers and objects. You will have the layer control panel showing up on the right. And now we only have one layer. I will click on add layer and this layer I will call it path, the pathway. And layer one, I will call it the cell. Okay, I will show you what will happen when I draw on the same layer. Let me create an ellipse like this over here. This big black ellipse right across the cell membrane. So this black ellipse is on the cell layer. And now let me switch to the pathway layer and create another ellipse that is the red ellipse when you hover over the the layer list on the right you will find that two icons will show up one is this eye icon and another one is the lock icon when i click on the eye icon all the objects on the cell layer would disappear it doesn't mean that they are deleted they're only hidden so when you click on the close eye icon again they will become visible again for example, when you have two objects here, let me move this hexagon here. Yeah, there you see. This is exactly what I was talking about. So, uh, for example, like what I wanted to do is to move these proteins, but sometimes you will just mix click and then you will be moving your cytosol instead and then you need to spend time to put them back that that would just waste a lot of time i will usually put the cell membrane and the cytosol in one layer and then i will click on this lock icon so now everything on the cell layer cannot be moved the only thing i can move will be on the pathway layer even if i mix click i don't need to worry that i will mess up the structures okay and let's draw a little bit of the apoptosis pathway let's make this death receptor as a review of what we have learned yesterday we already have this ellipse so we can create a radial gradient remember to come up to the control bar to switch it to the radial gradient and then just click and drag make sure you also shorten this gradient handle so your radio gradient will be in an ellipse shape let me select the magenta color and white at the center this is one subunit of your death receptor let's create two other subunits and now we need to rotate it for a specific angle we should come to the transform control panel and then type in the degree and let me try 15 degrees that's good this one should be minus 15 and now let's cram it together let's come to the align and distribute control panel and now we need to align them to the button edge and remember to distribute them evenly they are a little bit fatter than what i've drawn before now uh, we can also put the fat onto our death receptor let's come to the polygon tool select the polygon mode make sure it's six corners and click and drag now it's white so you cannot see it on a white background let me draw it here and make sure you hold control 
when you create your polygon so you can have your edge aligned to the canvas and now let's give it a radial gradient and give it a violet color the outline will shift and click on the color and 0 0.25 in this case, I squeeze it down like this. Now we have the FOD. Make sure you align them to the center. Always align your objects. We need to start labeling them. And now we will need to use the text tool. And before doing that, I will create another layer called text. And I'll lock the pathway layer. Let's come here to grab the text tool. It is this A sign. And click on the canvas. Then you will be able to create a text. Death Receptor. So the text looks very funny because, because we have a black stroke for the text and a violet fill. So you can simply just fill in the black as the fill and remove the stroke. Then it will look like a normal text. And the text now is quite big. That's scale them down eight point wide okay and here we can label the fad f a d d and now let's unlock the pathway layer because i want to align fad text with the objects so i can just select all of them and come here to click on center on a vertical axis now everything is aligned and now let's create some cast space grab our ellipse tool and hold control and drag. So there are two ways to create a Pac-Man. One is using this route node to create a size. But the problem, it cannot be very precise with the angle that you will have on the slice. But what if you want an exact 90 degree for your slice? I will show you how to do that. So first, have your circle ready and then make a square. Let's find the center of the circle. Create a straight line with your Bezier tool. Click OK, then you have a horizontal line. And now let's have a vertical line. And we can use the alignment tool to make sure that these lines are crossing at the center of the circle. Let's put the square. Let's put the square on top of the circle. Make sure that the corner lays right on top of the center of the circle. I'll remove these lines select both of them and then come up here in the object menu oh, let me move the canvas a little bit over there click on the path menu and then come here you will find this function called difference let's click on it then you can crop off the overlapping part so these functions in the path menu can help you to combine different objects into one shape they're really handy for building complex structures. When you have these two circles overlapping with each other, you can go to path. You can go to path and click on union. Then these two circles will be fusing with each other. That's how you create the cat space. And we need to rotate it for 45 degrees. So let's come back to our transform tool and we can type 45 degrees here. Let's give it a radial gradient. So grab your gradient tool and just click and drag and put a cyan color in there. For example, white at the center. Now you have your cast base. We can label it as cast base. There are two types of cast space. One is the active form, and another one is the inactive pro cast space. It has round corners in the example. And how do we do that? I will show you. This is the most advanced part of the beginner course. We will need to use the path effect control panel. Let's come to path menu and find your path effect here and once you have the control panel click on this plus sign while having your cast space selected click on the plus sign and search for corner and you will find this corners fillet chamfer effect click on it 
you will have this effect apply onto your object. Now, when you switch to the edit path by note tool, you will find these green notes. And when you click and drag these green notes, you can round the corner. You can also round multiple corners at once. Group select the green notes and drag on one of them. And you will be able to round the three notes at once. And now we can label them as the Procast Space, Procast Space 8 and Procast Space 10. We can create an arrow indicating the sequence of the pathway. Let's grab our Bezier tool and click, hold control and drag and click. And you'll be able to create a vertical line. And now let's go back to our stroke style and add an arrow marker. So you're already halfway done with the extrinsic apoptosis pathway. And I believe now you're able to finish the whole pathway by yourself by following my tutorial on my channel. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the course. Now you should be able to follow the tutorials in my Inkscape playlist. Thank you for hanging out with me in the past hour. And if you want to finish your apoptosis pathway, you can follow this tutorial.